Hi, this is Trin Johnson, and welcome to Dust in My Eye. Today's video is going to be on the use of pen with alcohol ink. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you'd like to see more from me, please hit the subscribe button, and if you'd like to be notified about future videos, please hit that little bell. I painted this picture of my Cornish Rex Gur Kitty after a watercolor class where we were exploring scribble pictures. I thought alcohol inks would really lend themselves to the scribble pictures, so I went home and tried a few things out. First I scribbled the picture of a bird on mineral paper, then I printed it on the back of Costco photo paper, and I inked the colors over top, then I scribbled on top of the scribble that had printed, but I didn't really like that because you could see the printed scribble underneath. Then I inked on a piece of mineral paper and scribbled over top of it but I wanted to have a more controlled way to put the ink on the bird. On this third one, I scribbled on a piece of translucent Duralar and then inked the feathers of the bird on top. On a separate sheet of Yupo, I inked a background and placed it behind the Duralar. After pondering my next video, I saw the picture of Gur hanging on the wall and thought this would be a great technique to demo for my next video. So I found a picture of my kitty, Princess Zelda, and did a practice run. You might have seen it on Facebook. I took a picture of this little cutie on a walk near my home. He's going to be the subject of today's video. I recommend that you make a chart of all your ink colors. It makes it so much easier when you're trying to pick out what inks you're going to use, especially when you're painting something in a more painterly style. These are the inks I started out with, although I added some later. A Ranger Teakwood, Sepia, Pebble, Espresso, and one of their new ones, Dijon. I also used Pinata's Mantilla Black and Copic's Buttercup Yellow and Bisque. If you were wondering what the little red device in the corner of the frame was, it's my clicker for my camera. These are some of the supplies I use for this video. I use these little palettes to put the alcohol ink in. It's, uh, I have some 91% isopropyl alcohol there in a little needle bottle. I have a little pad and a felt pad from Ranger. I don't think I used those this time, but I did use my makeup sponges. Gotta have those. Love my makeup sponges. All my little assorted brushes, um, various kinds and uh, a nice flat brush too comes in handy. A little dropper I use sometimes uh, for ink. And I have some Secura pens, a Micron pen, and a Microperm pen, along with a Jelly Roll for highlights. I use Duralar film for this demonstration. It's a translucent matte film, and it's got a very nice see-through quality to it. It takes ink really well. It also lets you take ink off really well. Um, I know it's available on Amazon, and I know Blix carries it. This is mineral paper. It's another choice um, along with Yupo translucent. Those both would work for this method. They're a little less see-through um, than the Duralar is. That's why I picked the Duralar, but you could use those. I printed out a nice high contrast picture in black and white of my subject and you can place that on a white sheet of paper and put the Duralar over top and you can see that you can see through it pretty good. And picking a light subject on a darker background helps a lot also. For my purposes, I'm going to use my little light table. Now these are relatively cheap. You can get them for around 
$20 or so, give or take, on Amazon. They're really handy to have for a lot of art projects. I'm going to tape my uh, black and white picture down on my light board now. As an alternative to using a light table, you can always just draw the subject loosely. Here I'm using a piece of Costco photo paper, Kirkland, um, the back side of it. And I'm just going to use a really light alcohol marker, light gray, and just roughly get my llama on the paper. And you can do this and then just look at your picture to get the idea of where you want to put your ink. And the ink will kind of take over where the gray is and kind of blend it in. So you don't have to really worry about it. Although Kirkland photo paper is a lot more staining than Duralar is, you could still use the Duralar even if you're not using the light table. I'm just going to get a very rough outline here and then I would be able to proceed with the same sort of process that we're going to use with the light table. I just wanted to give you an alternative. I'm going to attach my Duralar sheet on top of the black and white photo. You can see how well you can see through it, even without the light table. Works pretty well. Now the idea is we're going to lay down the color first, and that's why we're using the light table, because we can see where our subject is going to be. Because if we do the ink pen first, and then we lay down the color on top, the ink pen will smear. I have not found one yet that doesn't smear um, with a nice black line to it. So it works really well if you do it just like you would if you were doing a doodle on top of some alcohol ink. Now we are just going to work on the llama. We are not going to do the background we're just going to use the nice yellowy orangish straw color in the background. Keep it nice and simple. I'm going to start with some Dijon and the buttercup and the bisque in my little dishes. and get in a little, just a little bit in the cracks and crevices around him and real loose. I'm gonna do this with all three of the yellows and a little bit of the brown. Sepia, I believe? Yes, yeah, sir. And see the spot it dropped on my paper? Watch this. A little alcohol and Duralar cleans right up so you can really get rid of something if you make a big boo-boo. I think this technique is great for beginners. It's pretty straightforward and you get really fantastic results. I'm going to take one of my makeup sponges and I'm going to trim it a little bit because I want it not quite so squarish. I want a little bit more of a amorphous kind of shape so anyway and I'm going to just start dabbing and I'm just trying to lay down a background around the llama you can see I sped this part up 
I'm not being really careless, but I'm not being uber careful either. If it goes over a little bit or doesn't quite get into every little crack, it's going to be okay in the end. It's kind of a forgiving technique. going to throw some sepia in to give it a little more interest and get a little contrast in our background um, so it's not one dimension. I'm trying to blend it because I don't really want to see the shape. Now you can see when you lift it um, how exactly it's going down. I'm going to use a new uh, ink that I did not have on my list. It is a mixative. It's snow cap and it's made by Ranger. And I'm also going to use Shadow Gray and Shadow Gray is a pinata color. I'm going to mix the white with a little bit of teak wood to warm it up. And I'm going to get that taupey color that's all over the llama. Kind of the mid-tones. Now I'm going to get some of the darker tones in, the browner dark tones, give it some interest, shadows. I'm going to get the nose and the little darker brown spots. Um, this is one of the darkest parts of the llama, so I'm going to add a little mantilla black and get his nose nice and contrasty. And his little birthmark, got to get that. His mouth. Want to get a little around his eye. The little details that will make him stand out and give him some personality. Now I'm working with the shadow gray to give it a little bit of depth.
Now I'm going to start with the pen, and this is when I'm really looking at the picture more than what's underneath, because at this point there's so much ink on the paper that it's kind of hard to see what's underneath. So I'm really using my reference photo mostly, just to get that sketchy kind of drawn look. Um, with the other pictures I did, it was more of a scribble. With this one, with his hair sticking up like it was, I went for more of a traditional sketchy line. Um, I didn't really want anything real straight. And I tried to make everything a little more fluid. The pen is the fun part when his personality really gets to shine. When you put a white piece of paper underneath, you can really see what you've got. It's kind of fun. Like I said, I'm mostly using the reference photo now, not what's underneath the, the Duralar. I'm going to get those little wispy parts in. Those are like where his character really comes from. All the flyaways. I'm just going to get a couple more little details in with the ink pen just to give him those little pieces of personality. Now I'm going to come in with the gel pen and get just a little highlight in his eyes. Just a little more than there's actually there. So he's got some life. A little more ink. And he's done. Remember to keep a white piece of paper underneath him so he shows up. Here he is all neat and tidy. Please check out my Etsy shop, Dust in My Eye where I'll have prints of this painting along with prints of my other pieces available for purchase. And while you're there, take a look at my monsters and pendants. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.